So in the setting of fasting, the liver is charged with providing fuel for our body, especially the brain. So if you fast, let's say you go on a fast, every part of your body is willing to fast. The muscles will reduce the energy, the heart will slow down, your blood pressure will drop, but the brain refuses to fast. The brain says no matter whether you are sleeping or fasting or exercising, I need this much fuel per minute, per hour. So the liver is charged with that responsibility and it takes the fat from the, from the fat cells, the fatty acids, and through the mitochondria, it converts them to ketones. So that ketones can supply the brain. It takes the glycerol, which is part of your triglycerides, as well as a little bit of your muscle, and converts it through a process called gluconeogenesis. In other words, it makes blood sugar or glucose from fat as well as protein so that it can supply the brain. The brain can use ketones, but there is an obligate requirement for glucose, so it supplies that. So that's what the liver is charged to do. During fasting, the liver is charged with providing fuel for every part of the body, and every part joins in with the fasting except the brain. It will not compromise. The liver takes fatty acids from the fat cells, converts them into ketones for the brain. The liver also takes glycerol from triglycerides and amino acids from the muscle, and through gluconeogenesis makes glucose from the fat and protein, also for the brain, which needs some glucose besides the ketones. So the sweet potato will give me glucose, and in the presence of insulin, and because this liver is insulin sensitive, these channels are activated, they take in sugar, and they convert whatever sugar they are taking into glucose that is not needed for immediate burning by the muscles. But there is one other important thing that the liver does. Because as soon as you're eating food, there is plenty of food available. So the normal liver at this time shuts down glucose production. Otherwise, the liver is putting out glucose and ketones for the brain. But once you have eaten, it needs to shut it down. So there's a glucose overload. So in other words, they're taking in a huge amount of sugar. When you have that much sugar, you will need a lot more insulin for the sugar to get packed in. So in other words, you will raise your insulin levels. If this person is still normal, they'll convert some of the glucose to glycogen they will sh still shut down the output from the liver of the glucose it was producing when it was fasting. So in other words, the liver shuts down the glucose. But a large amount of this glucose is converted to fat because when you eat a large amount of carbs, there are signals going to the liver to activate the fat manufacturing machinery. So the fat machinery is jacked up. And the carbs that you have eaten, because we can store only a limited amount of carbs, the carbs will get converted to fat. When breaking the fast, say with a sweet potato, when the liver is insulin sensitive, it takes in this glucose that is not immediately needed by the muscle. And when you're eating, the liver shuts down hepatic glucose output. If you're eating a standard American diet, high carbs, this causes glucose overload. So you need a whole lot of insulin to bring the glucose in, and that raises, the pancreas raises insulin to do that. If normal, meaning you're not insulin resistant, then it will convert some of that glucose into glycogen. It shuts down any glucose output and converts the rest of the glucose that came in from the blood into fat because the carbs are signaling fat production.